Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks for the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to go through some tips and tricks that you can use with your iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max. However, a lot of these will work even if you have the standard iPhone 14 or older devices with iOS 16. But keep in mind, some won't work. So if you could, in the comments, let me know what device you're using and which ones didn't work for you. That way, others will know as well. All right, so the first tip we're going to look at is the dynamic island. And if you don't know what this is, it's this little black pill sort of icon at the top. And this thing is going to house some notifications and different actions that you can perform as you open different applications on the phone. So for example, if we just pull down our control center and we open our clock app here and we want to set a timer for 12 minutes, as soon as we do that and exit the app, you'll see that dynamic island in action. It kind of zoomed open. We can see the timer right there. We also have an action button on the left. But if we tap on that dynamic island, it'll open whatever app is performing the action in that dynamic island at the time. Additionally, you can actually tap and hold on the dynamic island and you'll get some general options that you can access right from there. Exiting dynamic island is as simple as just swiping upwards. You'll see it'll go back and that timer will continue. Now, if you have other apps open as well that work within dynamic island, for example, if we tap on music here and we just start playing some music, so we'll just open that up first and then we exit the app. It's now going to appear at the top there and now we've got two applications within that dynamic island. Keep in mind that when you have multiple, one of them will be pushed over and the main one, I guess the one that's taking precedence for whatever reason, will be in the main dynamic island section. So now we have Apple Music there. If we tap and hold on that, we'll get whatever Apple offers with their music. So we can stop, we can skip. We also can control what devices the sound is going to be pushed through and it's still going to maintain itself in that dynamic island. We still can access the other application as well just by holding and it will jump into that island and take over. And you'll notice that this dynamic island will work with a ton of different features, notifications, calls, messages. And as third party application creators create their apps to work with this dynamic island, you'll find that more and more features and apps will be more useful usable with it and it'll feel more like an actual feature rather than something that's a little bit gimmicky at the moment. So keep that in mind. But there it is. That's the dynamic island on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. The next tip we're going to look at our battery percentage. Now when we pull down our control center we can see we have 33% battery but you can actually add a battery percentage icon to the front page now. Open up your settings, scroll down to where you see battery, tap on that and then you're going to just enable the battery percentage option and right away you'll see we have a 33% battery indicator right on that battery logo. Keep in mind though, it will take a little bit of getting used to because it automatically fills the battery icon to the end so that it can house the number or the percentage inside. When you are going down to say 10% battery or when it gets in the red, it will actually show this in red. So that way not only will you see the percentage, but you do know with the color coordination there that you are running low on your battery. The next tip is the always on display. When you lock your iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, the display will stay on. And that's going to give you the ability to see a couple of widgets, your time, and then another set at the top. But basically having this always on display means that even when you lock your phone, you'll still be able to see the screen. Now for those of you that don't want this feature turned on here, you can just unlock your phone as you would normally. Open up your settings, scroll down to the display and brightness section, and then scroll down to where it says always on. If you turn the switch off, now you'll be back to your traditional black lock screen that's not always on. And you can always turn the always on display back on anytime you'd like in those same settings right there. The next tip involves restarting your iPhone or turning it off. Rather than having to push the two buttons here, waiting for the prompt and swiping to turn off, you can ask Siri to do that for you. Hey Siri, restart the iPhone. Just to confirm, you want to restart this device? Yes. And there you go, Siri is going to restart this iPhone by shutting it down and then turning it back on. So if you're one of those people that get annoyed with the two button power on and off, you can just have Siri do that for you now and it'll be a lot quicker for you. 
For this next tip, we're gonna go over the messaging app and I'll show you how you can unsend messages and edit them if you send them out. First off, let's just send a simple message here and we're going to hit send. That message is now delivered, it's sent out. And if we wanna take it back for whatever reason, we can hold our finger on that message and tap undo send. When we do that, the message disappears from our side as well as the receiver's phone at the same time. Keep in mind, the other person receiving this will have to have iOS 16 installed. If they have a previous version of iOS, it will not remove and unsend from their phone. Additionally here, if we send another one out, we can tap and hold on this same message here and we have an edit option. If we tap on edit, we'll get a little box where we can then change what we were going to say and then hit that check mark and it'll send that message now with the edit attached. Now they'll be able to see that this was delivered and edited, so keep that in mind as well, but at least they won't see the mistake you made or anything like that. Now as for the undo send message, when you try to undo send an old message or a previous message you sent out when you had iOS 15, it's not going to give you the option to undo send. Also, if the message exceeds a certain amount of time, I'm not sure if it's five minutes or 15 minutes, the undo send will no longer be there. And now the message is pretty much permanent on both sides. So keep that in mind, that's how you undo send and edit messages with iMessage on iOS 16. This next tip is great if you travel and you need to translate text, you can actually do that with your iPhone's camera. So we have some text here on this iPhone. It's in Chinese here. So we're basically going to hold our phone over that text here and there is a little bit of a glare, but I'm gonna do my best. You should see this little icon up here here. You may even see a translate option on the left, but either way, if you tap on this icon, it'll grab that text and now you get all of these options right here. If you tap that arrow, you have a translate. If you tap on that, it's going to translate for you right here. It's actually going to give you the play button so you can actually hear how it sounds and how to say it. And if you can get the translate option on the left side right here, it'll translate it for you right on screen. So keep that in mind if you travel abroad and you need a translator or to translate text, it's there for you with your camera app. This next tip involves the new wallpapers and lock screen built into these iPhones. Now these are the new lock screens with widgets and customizable font. And you can customize these in two different ways. The first way is to just use Face ID to allow the actual iPhone to unlock at the top. So for example, you can see it's locked right there. Just show Face ID, your face, and then it'll unlock. Then you're going to tap and hold on the lock screen right there. When you do that, you have access to all the wallpapers that are already set up, maybe from previous generation iPhones and things like that. You also have the ability to customize your wallpaper right here. So if we tap customize, we can tap in these little boxes here and change up these widgets. So for example, we turn that one off and we can pick a different one that we might wanna use, let's say batteries here. We wanna throw some battery widget up there. We can change the font of our clock to any of these fonts that we might want here. I'm just gonna leave it on the one I had and you can even change the color if you'd like as well. You can tap on the option above and also choose from any of these options here. So fitness, reminders, stocks. I have stocks up there already and I like that so I'll just leave it. And when you're done, you just tap done and it's gonna prompt you here, do you wanna set it as a wallpaper pair? So that means the wallpaper on your lock screen and the wallpaper on your home screen. You can customize the home screen as well from here. You can see how it'll look or how it looks in its original form. You can change the color. So you tap on that and then tap again and choose a color. Whatever color you pick, you'll have this little bar down here to change the shade of that color. You can also click up there. You get a full color box here, spectrum, sliders, all that good stuff and you can set it the way you want. You can even choose gradients, photos from your photo library. We'll just leave it on original and tap done. And now we've got our wallpaper. Now you could just swipe through your wallpapers that you already have, select the one you want just by tapping, and now you've got your customized wallpaper. Additionally, if you want to create a brand new wallpaper, you can go all the way to the right here, tap on the plus, and you'll get all of these wallpapers, a full wallpaper library that Apple has set up. Plus you have photos, photo shuffle, emojis, weather, all the way to color. And if you choose the emojis, this is kind of cool here. You can just select from all the different emojis that are available in the emoji library here. So if you want this one, you can see it mixes that up in there. You have up to six to choose from, and you can put those all in. Let's just do four. And now we've created this wallpaper. Additionally, you can swipe left and you can see a medium grid, 
a large grid, a rings grid, that actually looks cool, and then the spiral grid. And then you can set this up as well here, tapping those three to change the background color. Change the color to whatever you'd like. Maybe we'll just use that blue. There's another option down here. You can go back into your emojis and add additional ones. Maybe remove one that you didn't really like. And it changes up the whole dynamic of that wallpaper. So that's pretty cool. You can do that. You can add that in there. Customize the home screen again because it's going to be using that. Keep it to your original. Take the blur away. Add the blur. So it's totally up to you on how you want to set this up. And then it's there, it's added to your wallpaper sort of library that you can just switch from. And if you're used to an Apple Watch, that's how the Apple Watch backgrounds or Apple Watch watch faces work. So it's almost the same here now with these wallpapers. Keep in mind, if you don't have Face ID set up on these, the option to customize it on the lock screen doesn't really work because you kind of have to stay on the lock screen. And if you enter a passcode, it automatically will bring you into your phone. So if that's the situation for you, you can tap on settings go to wallpaper and you can do all your customizations right there rather than on the lock screen. So those are some iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max tips and tricks that you can use with pretty much any iPhone these days. It's really hard to find specific tips and tricks now with iPhones. It doesn't seem like a lot changes as much as it did in the past, but you do have the dynamic island and some cool features like undo text and all that. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification box so you're notified when I post new videos. Also, let me know which tips and tricks worked for you. I know there's tons more tips and tricks, but these are just a bunch that I came up with here. And if you wanna post your tip and trick, I'll be happy to pin the best one to the top comment. So definitely try to get the best tip there if you wanna have that top comment. Anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.